Good evening from the Channel's newsroom in London. North Korea has fired two short-range missiles, according to the South Korean military. The move comes just five days after Kim Jong-un supervised what was described as a strike drill for multiple rockets and tactical guided weapons into the East Sea. South Korea's defense chiefs believe the latest test involved short-range ballistic missiles, which traveled 420 and 270 kilometers. The tests come as a top U.S. envoy arrived in Seoul. The special representative for North Korea, Stephen Biggin, is in the South Korean capital for two days to discuss how to break the deadlock on nuclear negotiations. Meanwhile, President Trump has ordered new sanctions against Iran after it threatened to enrich its stockpile of uranium. The U.S. president is targeting the country's steel, aluminium, copper and iron sectors, which the White House says is worth around 10 percent of the state's economy. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff has also defended a decision to send an aircraft carrier and a bomber task force to the Persian Gulf. You know, we saw the intelligence and so we sent uh, some messages on Friday. Uh, to make sure that uh, it was clear to Iran that, that uh, we recognized the threat and we were postured to respond to the threat. China is also in the fire in line with President Trump, ramping up hostilities in the trade war. During a rally in Florida, he accused Beijing of breaking a deal after vowing to more than double tariffs on $200 billion of Chinese goods. China says it will retaliate, if necessary, with countermeasures. A delegation has arrived in Washington for further talks. So I just announced it will increase tariffs on China. And we won't back down until China stops cheating our workers and stealing our jobs. And that's what's going to happen. Otherwise, we don't have to do business with them. We don't have to do business. We can make the product right here if we have to, like we used to. Remember? Like we used to. I did get last night a very beautiful letter from President Xi. Let's work together. Let's see if we can get something done. But they renegotiated the deal. I mean, they took, uh, whether it's uh, intellectual property theft, they took many, many parts of that deal and they renegotiated. You can't do that. The United Nations has voiced its concerns over the escalation in violence in northwestern Syria. <laughs> Video has emerged of airstrikes in Idlib province. A helicopter was seen dropping a barrel bomb on the town of Kasa. And images uploaded to social media purportedly show more airstrikes in the town of Hesh. The Syrian civil defense, also known as the White Helmets, released videos of rescuers helping those who were injured. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says almost 200 people, including 85 civilians, have been killed in just over a week. The deputy of the Venezuelan opposition leader, Juan Guaido, has been arrested by the country's intelligence services. Edgar Zambano, who's the vice president of the National Assembly, was towed to prison in his car after he refused to leave the vehicle when approached. It's the first time a lawmaker has been arrested since last week's attempt to trigger a military rebellion to unseat President Nicolas Maduro. David Beckham has been disqualified from driving for six months. The former England international footballer pleaded guilty to using his mobile phone while driving after he was spotted by a member of the public. He was also ordered to pay a £750 fine and was given six points on his license. Pope Francis has introduced sweeping changes to Catholic church law, making it mandatory for clergy to report cases of sexual abuse and cover-ups. In an apostolic letter, he said bishops can also be held accountable for abuse of power in sexual relations with adults. A moment of silence has been observed in Russia to remember the lives lost during World War II. The ceremony was followed by a Victory Day parade through Red Square, showing Moscow's military might, before thousands of people carrying portraits of their relatives staged their own march. They were joined by the President, Vladimir Putin, who carried an image of his father, who fought in the war. And finally, Prince Harry has returned to work just days after becoming a father. He's in the Netherlands to promote the 2020 Invictus Games, an international sporting event he founded for military personnel who've been wounded in action. While that was the focus of his trip, the birth of his son didn't go without mention. The Duke of Sussex pleasantly surprised when he was presented with a gift.
And that's your international news around the world in five.